Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath, Burgess Hill and Hurstpier Point Methodist Churches. We gather today for worship on this, the third Sunday in Easter. And so as we continue to celebrate the life of the risen Christ amongst us, let us pray. O God, who walks alongside, who stops and waits with us when we need to rest, who bears with us when we are confused, troubled, or have lost the way, may we ever seek to walk your way, having a deeper awareness of your presence with us, encouraged and strengthened by you until we reach journey's end in your resurrection kingdom. Amen. And so we sing our first hymn, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. And so we come to our Bible reading for today, which is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 13. And it is set on what we would know of as Easter Day. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. 
and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And so as we reflect on this word to us, we sing once more, Come, Lord, be our guest.
So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and reflections of all our hearts and minds be guided by you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus and all his followers, as with many other Jews at the time, had gone to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. As those of us who join the Zoom Bible Book Club this week have learnt, the word festival in Hebrew is not just about a celebration, but a pilgrimage. Its meaning involves a journey, a journey each year that people were to make. How apt, therefore, that these two disciples, possibly a husband and wife, in John's crucifixion account there is a Mary, the wife of Clopas, could this be the same person as Cleopas, are on a journey away from the festival when they discover the ultimate source of celebration, the one who brings true freedom and salvation not necessarily from political forces, but from the forces of darkness, sin and death. We see in their pilgrimage that it begins in doubt and confusion. The scenes from Good Friday rightly grieve them, and the words of hope that others have offered seem empty and meaningless. Yet we see also that doubt and confusion are not opposed to God and faith. Instead, Jesus comes and journeys alongside. He asks what the matter is. He listens to their story, to their pain, to their confusion. He doesn't offer trite answers, but speaks of their pain and grief within the whole story of God a story that repeatedly shows God bringing life, healing, hope, through suffering and even death. Finally, Jesus points to the one who will take on all the suffering, grief and pain of this world so that God can bring ultimate healing and life. What is also encouraging is that they didn't recognise Jesus. We can sometimes feel as though Jesus has abandoned us when we don't always feel his presence. Yet maybe it is in the face of the stranger or the companion who journeys with us that Jesus is present and that it is through their words that we hear Jesus' words of love, hope, and life spoken to us. Yet the story doesn't end there. Jesus doesn't just appear to them as a storyteller or a theologian come to explain the things of God. Instead, he enters their home, sits at their table, becomes the host of the meal and nourishes them with blessed and broken bread. In this ritual act, they discover a means and a moment that can be repeated where they can discover the presence of the risen Christ with them, a presence that seeks to bless, to nourish, to strengthen. Their pilgrim experience of discovering their story, with all its pain and suffering wrapped up in God's story, and discovering those means and those moments of being opened to the ongoing presence of the risen Christ can be our experience also. And so we end this reflection by taking time to use our imaginations. We're going to have a short meditation. There will be times of silence within it. So do not panic if you do not hear me say anything, but just allow those silences to speak to you. Therefore, I encourage you to get into a posture that is comfy, to close your eyes and just notice the rhythm of your breathing.
Acknowledge the sounds around you that you can hear and then let them go. When you are ready, imagine yourself walking along the road out of Jerusalem. As you walk along, think about all that has happened to you over the last couple of days. Allow your mind to bring to focus those episodes that it will, without feeling the need to resolve any issues. How are they making you feel? Now notice Jesus walking alongside. Hear him speak your name. He asks what you have been pondering. Take time to respond, telling him whatever is on your heart. When you are ready, allow Jesus to reply. It may be a word, a feeling. It may even be a Bible story that comes to mind. Holding on to whatever you have received, you both continue to walk in companionable silence, content in one another's company. The journey ends at your front door. Invite Jesus in with you and see him sitting at your table, sharing a meal. In the course of that meal, Jesus takes some bread, give thanks, breaks it and gives it to you. As you receive it, be open to Jesus' blessing over you. When you are ready, open your eyes and return to the present moment, but do not let go of anything you have received. This short med meditation may have felt like it should have gone on longer, like you would have liked more space, but this is a journey that you can take at any time to create space on your own 
just to walk that way with Jesus, to share whatever is on your heart. I invite you through the weeks to come, if it is helpful, to use your imagination in such a way to encounter Jesus with you. Amen. As we come to our prayers of intercession, there is a response. When I say the words, God of the way, I invite you to respond with me. Journey with us. God of the way, journey with us. So let us pray. We pray for those who journey today, fleeing from devastation disaster, death or oppression. Give them the strength to persevere on their way. 
in the midst of confusion and trouble, be their comfort. God of the way, journey with us. We pray for those who journey with grief, particularly when death has felt like it has come too soon or too late. When the road feels hard, encourage them. When anger emerges at being forced on this journey, bless them with peace. When it feels like no progress is being made, strengthen them. May they have companions willing to walk alongside. God of the way, journey with us. We pray for your church. May we be communities of pilgrims who welcome all to journey with us, regardless of doubts and questions. May our gathering together enable us all to ask questions, reflect on your word and grow in faith. May our rituals and practices open us up to be more aware of your presence with us. God of the way, journey with us. We give thanks for those whose journey on this earth has ended, for whom death has passed. May they be discovering the joy of your resurrection life that you prepare for us all. Bring us with them to that kingdom of perfect light, life and love. God of the way, journey with us. All these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our companion on the way, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn today, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
And so as we step out from this resting place to continue our journey along your highway, may we know you accompanying with us and may we go with your blessing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen.